Today I'm gonna talk about the uh, wafer exposure system, which is the optical part of the whole process of semiconductor fabrication process. So basically there are three, three types of uh, wafer exposure system. Uh, one is contact, one is proximity, and one is projection. Uh, contact printing is where the mask is um, uh, placed exactly on the wafer. Uh, which is not really used in the industrial uh, industries because it damages mask and wave at the same time and it also have a uh, limit to uh, mask lifetime it is all, and the mask pattern size should be the same as the wave and this is really unpractical for industries to have and second thing is the proximity printing is which is basically um, same thing as contact printing but it's a bit uh, separated from the wafer. Uh, this obviously is only difference from the contact printing is that it has uh, less damage but it, it is also not really practical because of the diffraction uh, which causes a poor um, image re resolution. This also requires the uh, mass pattern size to be uh, one to one proportion and lastly the pro projection printing which is which is the most uh, commonly used in industries. This is really the most practical uh, te techniques because uh, it, uh, firstly, it requires optics, uh, complicated optic systems, uh, which is really expensive as well. And it, it, it uh, covers all the uh, side effects from the contact and proximity printing. So, um, it also use, requires this technique called stepper, which uh, moves the wafer as, is, as the mask pattern is sprayed onto the pattern. And then, yeah, this is how basically the whole thing works. And stepper, stepper as I said earlier, is the, um, is the, is the uh, machine that moves the wafer die by die to print the correct pattern per die. Um, and this wafer stage controls positions of uh, x-axis, y-axis, z-axis and also the uh, angle to it. So it really this helps the, the process to be more accurate and to be more practical. Uh, and also we talked about the numerical pressure and depth of focus. Um, numerical pressure is basically um, is the uh, uh, modification of uh, refractive index into sine theta. theta. This theta is the angle between the uh, the perpendicular line between to the uh, angle of the spray light. So less uh, uh, if this uh, numerical pressure increases, which means the uh, depth of focus uh, reduces because it closes down the distance between the wafer and the uh, light source. So we also have to consider the critical dimension, which is the minimum feature size of of any pattern that is sprayed on. So um, CD is um, indirectly proportional to numerical pressure and directly proportional to um, wavelength and also proportional to the process factor, which is uh, the engineering process, uh, engineering factors uh, during the process. So this, those are considered for now. Uh, what is important here it is that uh, shorter the wave is lesser the critical di dimension, which is really ideal for any kind of uh, uh, process engineers, fabrication engineers to have, because the, the fundamental purpose to this whole class and the whole te technology is to reduce the size of the semiconductors. So um, as I said earlier, it is also indirectly proportional to the numerical pressure. So so the uh, there's also a trade-off between the CD and DOF. DOF is the depth of focus. So yeah, and we also have to know that um, we could also reduce the critical dimension by uh, immerse, 
is the technology called um, technique called immersion needle, which means uh, we immerse a liquid or any stuff like that in order to increase the uh, in, in order to reduce the uh, the uh, wavelength of it because immersing it into some liquid it increases the uh, refraction refractive index so yeah so we also talked about CDSAM uh, CDSAM stands for critical dimension scanning electron microscope uh, which is which this basically um, scans the whole uh, pattern on the wafer to uh, by um, detecting the intensity of the light so from this we also could uh, look for the line profile whether the edge of the patterns are uh, rough or not and the, we also can see the overview of the whole pattern of the wafer uh, this machine is mostly built by Hitachi and yeah and we also talked about the light source the importance of the light source uh, we, we can consider the light source as a toothbrush shorter the wavelength of the light source smaller the toothbrush so using smaller toothbrush can we we can um, produce more um, accurate and more uh, small sized patterns so what currently we are mostly used is the ultraviolet part of it um, amongst the ultraviolet especially um, ARF which is argon fluoride is mostly used and the next technology the light source we uh, the industry is looking for is EUV which stands for extra, uh, extreme ultraviolet uh, which has a wavelength of 30.5 nanometers whereas the currently used uh, lithography light source is uh, 193 nanometers so there's a big jump between uh, the currently used uh, the UV lithography, UV lithography, and this is a key factor to any sort of uh, uh, chip maker industries to have in order to uh, succeed in the uh, competitive market, semiconductor market. So how EUV is produced is that uh, laser is sprayed to the each droplet of the dispenser, which um, explodes the uh, I think the some I think it collides with some atom and because of this collision it produces some light and and out of those light there is EUV and we extract the EUV uh, from that collision and then we somehow uh, using mirror optics to with residue and it, that is is the way how EUV is produced and this EUV machines are really uh, very high-tech machines and it's really difficult because you basically you need a vacuum system and also you need to have a mask that is uh, refracting, uh, refracting a mask which is because EUV is really sensitive to it as it, is, as it has a small wavelength uh, so anything could be absorbable by EUV light so this is really sensitive machine and requires high technology and photoresist uh, which is in short called PR um, is a light basically it's a light sensitive material and it consists of resin and PAC which is a photoactive compound and it, some additives and so on this depends on companies and each companies have different recipe but, but what is common in PR is that it consists of PAC um, and it's divided into two types obviously as I said early in earlier reviews uh, that is positive and negative positive uh, weakens the uh, bond between the uh, bond and whereas negative uh, strengthens the link so yeah so we also went to 
to talk about spin coating how PR is spread uh, spread on the wafer. Um, it, uh, it we have to consider uh, uh, several factors. Uh, one is the uh, the speed of the spin, speed of the spinning, and the and also the viscosity uh, in the spin time as well. So increasing spin spin speed and spin time reduces the uh, thickness of the film and viscosity obviously if you reduce it it reduces as well and after that there's this process called soft baking uh, which dries out all the software that there is this film uh, which is really important because you know, we don't need any unnecessary uh, software that is existing in the PR it's typically a bait for 60 to 120 seconds in 96 Celsius degrees. So, uh, also um, in realis uh, the in realistic problems that is faced by spin coating is that uh, because of the defects, uh, when the defects exist on the PR after spinning, it causes several problems to it. And and that is why cleaning uh, and hygienic problem is really vital for uh, semiconductor verification process. So, also we have to consider using ARC, which stands for anti-reflection coating. We we call it ARC for now. Uh, arc we have to consider because um, due to a reflection of any sort of light uh, it either becomes two light source uh, two light waves could uh, become this uh, can cause destructive interference and constructive interference constructive interference obviously um, means that uh, more photons are collided to specific areas which causes more energy to coincide which also in terms in lithography means that uh, more light is spread on to constructive interference places but destructive interference is, in contrast is uh, exposed to less light so in order to try to reduce this contrast uh, we have to use this material called arc which is anti-reflection clothing so there are two ways of putting arc material which is uh, top arc and bottom arc basically what it means is putting arc material on top of PR or at the bottom of PR so what industry is uh, is mostly, mostly used is block bottom ARC um, block is also divided to two types organic and inorganic organic is simple to make and it is a polymer you, you use the uh, absorption uh, bus character in the bark and uh, it is easy to use but it is, there's a lot of side effects to it so in, in industry we uh, they usually use an organic bark uh, it, is, it has good edge selectivity which is really important for any sort of uh, verification process that has a longer process time that's the only side effect to it we also want to talk about uh, phase shift mask phase shift mask is um, uh, a way of trying to is a technique trying to reduce the constructive interference uh, to have a better uh, to gain better uh, mask spectrum because constructive interference could cause the constructs, contrast ratio to be uh, lessened. So P, PSM is used 